stampers, this is Karen Phillip. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and today I'm going to show you how to make this card. This is basic, a basic technique called emboss resist, or an old technique I should say, and it's the ink resisting the embossed image. So I have made a couple other cards. I sort of progressed to the one that I ended up with. Here are two the same. They just have the image in the side, one purple, one gray. I like the way it looks, but I was tired of purple. <laughs> and then here's another one using the cinnamon cider. And it wasn't bright enough for me, so I ended up with using Fleur de Flamingo, which just brightened it up. Some people that saw this card in class said that it looks sort of like the soot technique. It's you use a candle and I don't I've never done it, but you use the candle and you burn it and then it leaves this sort of look. And so it's sort of unusual to emboss with or not emboss, but use the blenders for black ink, but it just spoke to me, so that's why I'm making it. <laughs> Let's get started. So we will first need a piece of cardstock that is, the dimensions will be on, on the bottom of this video. Alright, I just lost the kit. Here we go. Okay, so I'm using the small piece and this month we are featuring the Hydrangea Haven set, or sweet actually, and so this is a stamp in that stamp set. It's called Hydrangea Haven. And this is sort of meant to be the fill-in for the basic one. You could do this in purple or whatever color to make it colored. But I'm doing it as one image itself. So just to switch it up a little bit. I have it mounted. I have both pieces mounted. And I'm using Versamark, inking it up. And you want to ink it up well. And then we're using our white embossing powder. Eh, that was stupid. Okay. Oh, I gotta stamp it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so then you stamp it on the paper. It works much better. Can't believe I did that. And I'm using the silicone sheet or some you want some sort of a padded thing so that you get a nice image. This is a flat stamp and it's a fairly large stamp so you want to get the whole thing. And if you don't it's okay but... Alright, now it should emboss very nicely. One of those days. You won't be able to see anything, well too much anyway, until I start embossing hopefully. No, that one didn't take too well, but we're going to go with it. And any extra, I didn't use the embossing buddy. Okay, so you can kind of see the image. Now we will emboss it. Always close your embossing powder before you start heating and your ink. Just a word of advice from experience of messing things up. Now we will emboss it. And I had a, oh here it is. I just use a piece of foil wrap, wrapped with chipboard, or it's a piece of foil wrapped over chipboard. It's just taped on. This one has seen its better days, but it still works fine. It sort of absorbs the heat so your paper doesn't curl as easy, and it also helps you from burning yourself. All right, let me heat it up a little bit here. Now when you emboss, you don't want to go like this. You just want to hold it until the color changes. And again, I don't know if you can kind of see maybe. So now it's changing. Now I'm just following the way the color is changing. And again, you don't want to go like that. It, it doesn't heat it up evenly then. And if you kind of raise it up a little bit, you'll, the light will hit it so you can see where you've hit and where you've missed. It should be pretty quick. It's a big image. There we go. 
and so now you can see, there you go, now you can see the embossed image. And now to do the resist part, this is, again, it's a pretty basic technique, but it's sort of fun. And because we're using black, one key thing that you need to know is you don't want to use any permanent ink, like stays on or the ar black archival ink or anything like that because you won't be able to it'll stick to the white and so you want to use a water-based ink the black memento works well if you're using colored ink all of our inks except the white are they're water-based so you should be okay with that I'm using my blend I'm tapping it in I put my finger here so that if you go like this and just tap it, you'll only get ink on this bottom part, not the whole thing because these are very flexible and it just kind of like pushes it up. So I like to put my finger on top, tap it. You don't want to rub. Well, you can rub, but then you get, you don't need to rub. Put it there, tap off to get any extra ink and you, so it doesn't blob on you. And then you go around the image. You don't need to hit the white, all of the white, if you don't want to. You, it's just really not necessary. You can, but it doesn't, it doesn't really need to do that because you'll be wiping the ink off. And this just gives a nice glow around the image. I got a little blob right there. And you don't want to go too dark. You can. See, I didn't do it again there. It'll still look nice. <laughs> but now now you know why I say to do do and not do things. Okay, it's leaving my finger out. There. Okay, so it gives you the idea of what I'm trying to do. So basically, you are sponging or using your blends over an embossed image. Now you can see that this image is pretty gray. And to fix that, it's real easy. You can take, let me cover up the ink so I don't make a mess. Okay, you can take a napkin or a paper towel or a rag, whatever you'd like to use, and just wipe this off. And as you can see, it takes off all that extra ink. Now it's still kind of gray which is okay. You can leave it like that. But I think I couldn't find the napkin so I tried a wipe because that's all I had. So I'm taking a wipe, a, a wet, you could just use a wet napkin as well, but the wipe works. And I'm using just a tiny bit of it. You don't want to get it on the ink because it will kind of smear the ink unless you want that look. So now we're just wiping off. I'll just do half. And, uh, yeah, you can see you can see the difference here. It just brightens it up a little bit, like on this leaf. You can see how much it brightened this one compared to this one. So if you use a non-waterproof ink, you won't be able to get this off of here. So I'm not touching any of the inked part, just the embossed part, and that just really makes it white. So just a little tip. See, it's all on the tip of my wipe. Now it's very easy for this card. Now we're just going to put it together. And that's that's really all there is to doing the technique of what's it called again? Emboss resist. You guys are probably yelling. Emboss resist. I'm using Fleur de Flamingo and then a four by four four by five and a quarter inch piece over it that's embossed in this floral design. It's Ornate Flowers 3D embossing folder. A piece of black just to ground it. And again I will put all the dimensions below the video. And then this will get glued on. Now because this is white, regular white cardstock, it's not the thick, it will show any lines that you, like if I squiggled this all on, I'm using glue because this is pretty bumpy. So I'm just putting little dots and it will be enough to hold it on. 
but then you won't get all the lines showing through it. It's just something that I've discovered as we go along here. Like that, just hold it on a minute. Oops, it's not dry, obviously. Okay. I said it's pretty bumpy. Okay. Then I have this ribbon. It's uh, I'll put the ingredients in the bottom of the video because I just don't remember the name of this. It's black sparkles or something, but it actually has glitter in it so that just brightens it, this whole card up. I like to use, you could use any glue dots to attach this or you can use, sorry for my arm here, you can use these glue dots from the paper pumpkin kit. I heard a video the other day from Sarah, our CEO, and she hates these things, but I use them all the time and I love them. So I guess it's a matter of personal preference. Okay, I can't find the poke tool. So I will use my scissors. So I'm using two, two of these. It's a pretty thick ribbon. And this ribbon is a little stiff. It was a little trickier making the bows, but they just look so pretty. So I do this for all my club members. I make all their bows, or any classes I make the bows. So now I'm just taking off the strip. I always put the adhesive on the card, not the bow. It's easier to line up and it's less messy. Now I have the sentiment. It's from the hydrangea set and it is stamped with Versamark on black and then embossed with white. And then I'm just cutting around here, moving my paper around. And that way you get a nice rounded edge. And even though it's such a tiny, tiny sentiment, it just is perfect for this. You could put it like right there and you still could see it. And this is just going to get taped on. Maybe. Okay. Like that. You could add a little bling to it with a few rhinestones or just leave it as it is. I think I'll just leave this one and that's all it takes for this card. So have fun with this technique and go make one. Have a great day.